a surprisingly fucking around video. And um, that's about good enough of that. Um, so I had a thought. Uh, and I was thinking about um, strong flour and how to uh, use it for making bread. And you can't really use plain flour. But the only real difference is the amount of gluten that's in the uh, strong white flour compared to the plain flour. So I was thinking, can, could we somehow doctor plain flour to up the, the gluten content in it? And therefore, if we really needed to, in the time of desperation, could we um, make a, a decent loaf of bread from plain flour by simply adding some, uh, well, not simply, because it's going to be kind of quite difficult, um, but could we add some um, extra gluten to it to kind of turn it into strong flour? So that's my kind of thought. I really should have done some research and seen how much um, how much gluten is in, because it says protein, it's the protein difference, but it's not really protein. It's, it's not. I don't think it's just as simple as that. But anyway, so then I was thinking about that uh, horrible uh, thing called seitan, uh, which is basically just the gluten that you extract from the flour. So I was thinking, can we make some seitan and then add that a part portion of the seitan back to plain flour to turn it into a bread flour? Seems interesting you know kind of like a so I need to kind of I need to kind of like have a faff around so my thoughts are uh, some kind of experiment so I'm going to make some seitan with some plain flour I'm going to make some seitan with some uh, strong white flour and then we'll kind of get an idea of because we're extracting the gluten uh, we'll have a kind of like if I use the same amount of make the same amount of seitan with plain flour as uh, strong white flour then we should the seitan that we've made should be be able to weigh them and get an idea of, of what the difference of the gluten is in the flour, if that makes sense. I probably could just do some research on this on the internet, um, but I'm not about that. I'm all about getting my hands in and having a go. So, exact same method to make both. It's a bit of a faff. Um, so, move those out of the way. So, I've got 500 grams worth of plain flour in here and 200 grams worth of water. We'll mix these and knead these for 10 minutes and then we're going to wash out the the uh, water. And I'm also going to save the um, the starch that comes out of the flour as well because we might be able to just use that for something as well because I don't like waste. So if we're going to do it, um, even if we just get the starch out of it and then I was kind of thinking that maybe we could thicken something, see to starch just thicken something instantly up uh, like, um, like what McCoy does. I'm going to need some more water than that. Like a, like a corn flour, like corn starch instantly um, thickens sauces up uh, without the need to kind of cook it out. So we'll put another 50 grams of water. So will the starch that we, that we get out of the flour do the same kind of job? Because normally when you cook with flour to thicken up sauces, you need to, um, need to cook the flavour of the flour out. Well, you don't need to do that with corn flour, stroke corn starch. But anyway, so we'll make a dough, we'll knead it for 10 minutes, and then we'll start the washing process separately. So I'm also going to use the same, it's going to be a longer process, so I'm going to use the same water to rinse and repeat the, uh, to get the, to wash the starch out of the, well, we might even need even more water. I don't know, let's see. So by kneading, we're going to activate the, gluten in the flour. So hmm, it's gonna need even more. Maybe another fifty grams. That looks alright. That's not that much is happening there. So another fifty grams. So if I'm talking while I'm doing that's right. So we'll get an idea of how much water we need to add. So, I tend to do my, that's too much water, but it'll be fine, we'll mix it all in together. So my videos tend to be, also me working it out, so, like the thought of actually doing something and not filming it, and then, I don't know, I just like the idea of filming something and going with it, rather than working something out and then doing it, and then filming it. 
I know, they just film it. Will it work? Type of thing. You know, most things do, some things don't. But I'm much more interested in the process. And it's also there for me to kind of have a look at the process as well. So that's kind of quite wet, but it won't really matter. As long as we add the same amount of water to the, the white flour when we do that, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. And the, uh, as the gluten develops, it'll soak in more water anyway, so it won't be much as much as a shaggy mess as it is now. So uh, it should be fine. So that, we'll just get that out of the bowl as well, because we'll use the bowl. I'm not, I'm not into making wash up, so we we'll use the same bowl for the either the rinsing or for the mixing the uh, strong white flour same time as well as this moves along it will pick up the old bits off the board it's already it's already dry already so that's fine so we'll give this 10 minutes of kneading and then we'll be back right so 10 minutes of kneading and we have a nice soft dough that's really quite nice dough with that um so I'm going to do the same with the strong white flour. Uh, I'm just going to let that rest for an hour before we start washing it. Um, and because this is kind of a controlled experiment, as much controlled as I can be bothered doing, um, I'm going to use these containers to wash it. So let it rest in that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour some amount of pour a set amount of water into there and give it a wash, um, and then kind of transfer it to uh, the other. Uh, container which will have some water in and then we'll let that water uh, separate into the starch and the water and then we'll use that same water again to wash it again so we're not kind of so I know how much I don't know how these calculations are going to kind of work but I'll know how much water I put in the dough I know how much water I've washed the dough in so it's as much of a control as I can kind of do and then we can also uh, measure how much starch is going to be in uh, that's come out of the dough as well so this is the plain flour dough, and it's going to go in these two containers, which are both uh, old uh, soup containers, like dried soup containers, and they're both going to be potato and leek. And then the strong flour one, I'm going to put in two other same containers, so it's as much control as I can do, uh, but they're going to be like old mushroom soup uh, containers. So that's where we are. I'm going to let, let that rest for an hour, make up some more dough, a little bit out of breath, I don't know why, um, probably because I've been kneading for 10 minutes. Uh, I'm not as fit as I should be, um, so that we'll give that a rest. We'll do the strong flour next, and we'll keep them all kind of separate, and we can see how it turns out. This is purely for my own interest, as most of the things that I do are. Um, but it's also a recipe, a way on how to make seitan, uh, which is pretty straightforward. Uh, but there's, there'll be better videos on how to make seitan. This is just me faffing around. Dough has rested, and I have two liters of water, which we are going to use to wash the. Oh, we're going to use two liters. No, we're going to use a liter. Is that a liter? That's about a liter. No, we need to be that exact with this, don't we? So that's one point. Just put one point five. One point five. A little bit more. A little bit more. Right. So that's 1.5, and then we'll put a litre in that one. You can see. Nope, it's more. Nope, it's more. About a litre, so we'll put a litre in there, so that's that. So 1.5 litres in there, one, point lit or one litre in there, so we'll do exactly the same for the um, strong flour. This is the plain flour, and then we just wash out the starch from the, from the dough, and we keep washing it. You're supposed to change the water. And keep washing it when the water is saturated with the starch then we're supposed to change the water but i'm not going to do that i'm going to keep the starch for something else so what i'm going to do is i will allow the starch to settle down to the bottom of the 
this container, this container, and then I will collect it. And then the water should be relatively clear after an hour or two, and then we'll repeat the process using the same water again. It's just so I know how much water there is and how much starch we're collecting and all that kind of stuff. Just trying to keep it as scientific as possible. So as you can see, it's becoming nice and milky, which is the starch being washed out of the of the flour. And we're just left with the pure gluten. And this that container there is just to put the the seitan in, well let's call it the gluten, it's not going to be seitan because I'm not going to cook it like seitan I'm going to cook it, I'm just using it to be gluten so it'll just keep it moist so when this becomes really milky we know there's lots of starch coming out I think the water's only going to oh, what's the word I'm looking for? the water's only going to take on, there is a fancy word saturated um, I think the the water will only be, be able to take on so much starch. Uh, it'll only be, be able to become so so saturated. But I mean, it's dissolved. The starch is dissolved in the water, but it will collect at the bottom of the of the container, which you'll see. So I'm saying things are going to happen, and they will. But then we end up with this kind of uh, looks like um, coal fat, which is the lining of the stomach or intestines which is probably not something that vegans want to hear if they're ever making seitan so we'll just wash this and keep washing it get as much starch out as possible it's going to take about three goes so it's going to be a slower process you can just take this and transfer it to a, a new one we call it a new container and then repeat the process so it's a lot faster but i've already explained why i'm doing it this way so i don't think that water is going to become any more much more saturated than that. So, and what we'll do is so we'll clump it together, squeeze out any kind of moisture. So, as you can see, it's breaking down, it's going to like long fibres. So, that can go in there to stay moist. And there's a few bits of Satan in there, so that can just stay there like that. We'll let that water settle, and then we'll be able to get the water, get the starch out of that, and leave it in there. So I'll do the same with the other one, and we'll just rinse and repeat, and rinse and repeat, and rinse and repeat. I'll grab it and throw it back in the phone. But we'll see how we go on. You don't need to see the rest of the process uh, because it's just the same again. Although no, I won't record it. I'll leave that and you'll see how the uh, starch settles down to the bottom and then we'll collect that starch and then we'll see from what else we can do with that starch. So, this has slightly cleared, meaning that the starch has fallen down to the bottom of the container. So we'll pour off the clean-ish water and then we'll see down the bottom of the container that there will be the starch left over, which we'll connect, collect things just starting to pour into there which we'll collect in a separate container so, as you can see lots of starch has come out so ah, it's acting a bit like cornflour when cornflour was wet so we'll see what happens with that we've lost a little bit of the water that's fine so, into a container like that. It'll the water will come to the top again. And as we add more starch to it, we'll get um, we'll get a better idea. But I just um, I'm curious about it and I don't want to waste it. But I think we'll be able to thicken things up like and use it like a cornstarch. There's a little bit left in the bottom, that's fine. Water back into the container and then wash the seitan again 
and rinse out some more of that starch. And then take the bottom of the starch from the bottom of there, add it into there, vice, and carry on and carry on and carry on and carry on and carry on. Right, I have washed all the starch out of this. Um, well, I'm going to call it seitan, but it's not. It's, well, it is seitan, um, but it's. Um, it, I've, I've washed all the starch out, and we have left with the gluten. So we kind of need to weigh uh, which. So each one, so we kind of know what, um, how much gluten is in in the flour. Pretty much looks like strong flour. This is the strong flour. This is the plain flour. You can see the difference in gluten. So. That'll give us some idea. I have been thinking about this, and I was thinking about it while I'm swimming, when I do lots of my thinking. Um, I'm not entirely sure how easy it's going to be to knead that, mix that back into into some flour. Um, I don't know, but we'll have a go. But anyway, so I'll weigh this on the scales. Turn the scale off. That one weighs. 169 grams, 170 grams. It's not going to be completely accurate. This will have lost. There'll still be a little bit of starch in there, uh, and we'll have lost some of the gluten in in the flour in the back. But so we've got 170 grams, and then turn that one off. Anytime you're ready, and then in that one. We've got 238 grams, 237 grams. So you're looking at 60, 70 grams worth more of gluten in the strong flour than in the plain flour. So I was having to think. I'm going to have a go at kneading some of that gluten back into some flour. Uh, so I'm going to make up dough and then kind of add some of that into it and see what kind of happens, see if we can get like a, a usable kind of dough. Um, otherwise I was thinking, while well, I was swimming, um, that maybe kind of making up a bread dough with plain flour and then washing it in water to get rid of some of that starch might just kind of work. So I washed it about four times. So you kind of think, if, uh, if, it, if we do it four times then we, it shows it lessens, doesn't it? So the first time we wash it, we'll lose quite a lot of starch. So maybe I should have done that. I should have weighed how much starch we got out of each one. <sighs> so we'll kind of do, do like a guesswork. Yeah, so if I can't knead that back in some dough um, and it be completely mixed in with the dough and the flour um, without that kind of looking like it, it's not properly mixed in, um, then maybe washing a, a, a plain flour bread dough in some water um, might kind of rinse out some of the starch and kind of make it more like a higher gluten content. Maybe, 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 maybe. But anyway, so those are those. That's that. So then these are the the liquids. There's still a bit of it's settled down to the bottom. I just need to get off some more of that water. But you can, it feels, it feels like like cornstarch. So, when you mix flour cornstarch with water, it um, it goes like a funny. There's like a resistance to it. It's quite strange. Like it, it feels like it's solid, but then it just runs off your finger. But anyway, so that's that. So we'll let those settle a bit more. Now I've just done that. We'll settle that a bit more, and then we'll skim off some more water, and then we'll have a look at that. But I'll mix up some dough and see if we can get some of this mixed into the dough. That may be. A, I'll do a calculation and then I'll, we'll see about it, mixing it in. So, I say a lot of so's. So, um, I had a quick calculation. I just kind of thought, well, there's approximately 70 more grams worth of gluten in the um, 70 more grams per 500 grams uh, in the of gluten in the strong flour than is in the plain flour. So, what we simply do is we weigh out uh, 430 grams worth of plain flour and add 70 grams worth of the seitan gluten into the flour and then give it a mix. So that's kind of my calculation. And then I put in 300 milliliters of uh, water, which is what I mixed, got the bread dough uh, yesterday with. So it was, it was, it was that. And we'll just kind of see how and if it wants to kind of 
knead together that neatly. I, I could have, I suppose I could have just done like a, a, a bread dough type thing. So we can see that that's the seitan there. So we need to hopefully knead it all together. So the, I'll turn that gas off. I have to turn that gas off, that's okay. So we can hopefully, through kneading, we can knead the gluten back into the flour, but we can see it there. So hopefully, it'll mix back through. It'll break the, the starch will break it back down, and then we can mix it in. I think probably this is the long way to go on other things. I think at some point I'll have another go and see if we can wash out some of the starch in a, in a, in a bread dough to make it more to get rid of some of the starch and up the kind of gluten kind of content but then we'll kind of have to knead some flour back into it because it might become a little bit wet so we're going to see but I think certainly with a, with a sourdough we leave it to prove for you know sometimes like up to 48 hours so I think the gluten might just kind of like soak back into the flour and the water. So, everything's just a bit of fun, isn't it? Everything's just a bit of fun. So maybe there's a bit too much water. I might need to add a bit more flour, but I don't want to. But it looks like it's going back in. So I have to. If this works, We'll make some, I could just pop out and buy some. And I think I've got a bit of yeast in the, in the cupboard. But I don't know if it'll, we can just, it might just be a bit too old, the yeast that I've got. But it looks like it's working its way back in. So, it looks like it's working back in. Which I can't see why it wouldn't. Well, I did think that it would. It wouldn't work its way back in. It's not holding together yet. So we haven't activated the the gluten in the in the flour that was already there yet. So I'll carry on kneading. We'll give it 10 minutes. Do it 10 minutes from now, put the timer on. And then we'll see what it's like after 10 minutes. Right, so we gave it 10 minutes of, of kneading. And it's all right. It's all right. It's not, it's not a particularly perfect dough, but it's all right. And I found some used in the cupboard. And even though it's uh, a year, past its, well, six months past its, um, its use by date, it's still active. So I don't want to add any more liquid to that dough, so we'll just use a packet. And then if we can just add dough, add yeast, add dried yeast to dough. Um, we're gonna find out though. We're gonna find out. I think it'll just take a little bit longer for it to start um, fermenting. I don't want to have to mix up any more dough. But we'll get it mixed in. And then we'll see what happens. It might need, when we knock it back, it might need another knead. But everything's just a bit of an experiment, isn't it? I haven't had any salt yet. I'll have to get this mixed in. And then, uh, we'll get it mixed in. And we'll get it rising. should be enough liquid in there for it to start activating and when we add some salt uh, I don't know I don't know I don't know but it's alright though is that once we get it all properly mixed in I don't want to add the salt because I don't want the salt to kill off any of the uh, kill off any yeast just yet so 
and you will need to add salt to improve the flavour, it doesn't actually do that. Mm, why do you know? Actually salt is a little bit, it'll, it'll slow down the proving process with salt, but an improved flavour, but I have to add it to bread. So, yeah, you can see it hasn't mixed in, but it'll be fine, it'll melt in, I'm sure. That can be mixed in well enough for the moment. What we'll do is put a cover on that. Let's see if it starts to rise. So I'll leave it for, I can, I can still see the bits of yeast in there. So we'll leave it for half an hour with the yeast mixed in. And then we'll give it another bit of a knead. So it, uh, once the yeast has melted a bit, we'll see how it goes. Shower cap for the rotten collet, for the. Uh, that's it. Shower cap to cover it. It cuts down on the plastic waste. It's actually risen. It's not an even rise though. We can see that there's bubbles wanting to come through, which we get with a sourdough. You can see there that it's, it's certainly aerated. Um, but it's not like an even one, which you normally get with uh, a proper bread yeast. Uh, you get a, a, a less even uh, rise with a sourdough. So, we'll knock it back. We'll give it another bit of a... It might be because the, the yeast wasn't um, distributed evenly throughout the, um, throughout the dough, because I just added to it rather than than, uh, than, than, what call it, than um, mixing it in with the uh, the liquid, which you normally do, and then you get like an equal quantity of the. Sorry, I'm just grabbing something. And we can make a video. Uh, we can answer another question within within this video. So yeah, so because it wasn't into uh, into this first into the dough uh, evenly, it's probably why it hasn't uh, risen evenly. So we'll just. I'm curious, I did have another swimming thought about um, can we, with a sourdough, uh, you shape the dough and then you get that nice spring, it springs open when you cut it and you cook it, cook, cook it in the oven. And I was kind of thinking, can we do the same with a normal bread yeast? Um, I don't know, I don't know, and I don't know any. Master Bakers to ask, ask the question. So, I don't think people make, you can make want, people who make bread themselves at home tend to want to make a sourdough rather than a normal loaf these days. So, we'll see. So, I'll shake the dough and then we'll see if, when we put it in the, um, the proving basket, if, it, um, if we can get that nice spring up. No. I'm gonna, I'm gonna slow down the proving process by putting it in the fridge for this final bit of a proof. So I'll put it in the fridge for knock the air out of it. And I'll put it in the fridge actually. And we'll see how we go. Be right. Yeah, we'll see how we go. So we'll give it a, a bit of a need. Make sure it's all a bit more uniform. It feels okay. As the dough goes, it feel, it's feeling okay. But we'll just give it a proper mix, a knead, and then it'll. Or maybe it's not like an even knead because the gluten's not evenly distributed through the through the bread. But we'll give it. A, it doesn't look like. Well, I can't see the the added gluten in it in the bread anywhere so we'll just kind of have to see so we'll give it a bit of a need and then that hopefully the yeast will all be even dispersed through it or a little bit more even dispersed through it so we'll see how it turns out so all right so I'm shaping the dough a bit wet so took it in on itself like that it's a very wet dough I don't think I'm Particularly good enough to do this. So, 
we are creating tension by pulling the top of the dough and tucking it underneath itself like that so you kind of see what I'm doing and this will create tension that hopefully will make it spring open when we cook it in the oven into the proven basket. Let me just the flour on top. I haven't got time to bake it at the moment. So I'll just stick it in the fridge for a couple of hours. For a little bit more of a proof. It'll slow the proving process down and then we'll bake it when I come back home. Right, it's risen. Maybe a little bit too much. But we'll see how it turns out. <laughs> So, hot cast iron pot. <coughs> yeah, extremely hot preheated oven. Right there. Slice. Lid almost on. Spray. Some water on there, which will give it a nice crust. That's enough. And then in the oven for 30 minutes. Set the timer so I don't forget. I won't forget. Let's have a look. Ooh. That looks alright. <coughs> that looks alright. Nice and hollow sounding. Gets the kind of split like a bit of a, of a sourdough. We'll have a look at it. What it looks like on the inside once it's cooled. Um, yeah. Here we go. It's not as crusty as the sourdoughs that I make. Nice and soft though. There we go. That's got a suitable grain to it, hasn't it? That's certainly not. That's um that certainly doesn't look like a a bread made with plain flour at all. At all. And considering I made it in a bit of a haphazard way, that's turned out pretty well. So I think, yeah, I think you can take, extract some gluten, gluten out of plain flour and add it back to some other plain flour and make a strong bread flour. Which is, <laughs> I don't know, interesting. Um, if, I don't know, it's been, it's, let's be honest, it's been a funny couple of years. Um, and I think if, if the world carries on um, with, shortage, with shortages of things, I think there might be a shortage of, um, of strong flour. And you want me and you can make, you can, you can still carry on making your own bread by using a plain flour. Also, also, it begs another question, which everything always does. Everything always leads somewhere else. Um, could I take the gluten from some plain flour that I extracted and add it to another type of flour that you ordinarily couldn't make a bread out of? So that's kind of quite interesting. So I'll have a think about that. And I've still got some um, some gluten left. So we might just have a go at using it in a another type of flour and have a go at making a bread. That might be kind of quite interesting. Right, I need to boil. I need to make a little bit of a white sauce. So I boiled some milk up with a bit of a couple of stock cubes in, and this is the starch that came out of the seitan when I was extracting the gluten from the flour. 
So we'll see if this acts just like a corn flour and instantly thickens the sauce. Hopefully it will. Let's tell quite quickly. Come on, boil a bit. Oh, there we go. Thicken straight away. Let's turn it down. There we go. Thicken straight away. That's all right with that. There we go. So we can use that. Just give it a proper taste rather than sticking my finger in it. It's a little bit split. That's fine. It doesn't taste like flour. So that's okay. So that's a little bit thicker than that. There we go. That'll be about as thick as it wants to be. There we go. So I won't waste that starch. I'm about to thicken some sauces with it, or gravies, or something like that. It's fine. So there we go. We don't like to waste. We don't like to waste anything.